Welcome to Uninfluence, mother bitches. Well, shit. It's Thanksgiving week. You got a lot to be thankful for. Yeah, that's topic number one. Happy Thanksgiving to all you people. And name something you're thankful for. One, two things. Me? Yeah. I'm thankful for you, co-host. That's nice. That's nice. And, uh, you know, I'm thankful for just fucking everything that has contributed to where I'm at in life. You know, which is a lot. There's a lot of people to thank. I can't uh, can't thank them all, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try and then end up leaving somebody out to get their feelings hurt. But uh, there's been a lot of people along the way that have contributed to uh, to me being where I'm at uh, in this station in life, and uh, and I'm massively appreciative of that. So thank you to all of you. Yeah, Rohan. I would have to say I'm thankful for. Um, all the opportunities I've been, I've been blessed to have these last, these last two years. Um, the trajectory of my life has completely changed because of certain key people. Um, yeah, that's a great so, story. Hey, so Matt, tell me about, <laughs> I, I had to do that. I'm fucking with you. Is it weird that I'm picturing the meme that's gay? <laughs> okay, go ahead. Finish. Um, but just for that and obviously my family and my parents and just, um, overall just very humbling feeling of, of gratitude. Sweet. Which That's camera's on? Middle? Mine? Which it's, one? It's on yours right now. Okay. I want to know what you motherfuckers are thankful for. Put down in the comments what you're thankful for. And if it's stupid, I'm going to leave it. But If it's good, it's going to get deleted. Yeah. If it's good, <laughs> I'm deleting that shit. I'm thankful for all you people. You people. I said it. You people. Thankful for Mike. Uh, Mike's a big positive part of my life, and I'm thankful for all the family, friends, and supporters I've had. HIV positive. HIV positive like a motherfucker. <laughs> Yeah, thankful for all the people in my life that have helped me grow over the past year. Uh, thank you, and uh, hope if you're not here next year, fuck you. Uh, yeah, that's it. So write down in the comments what you motherfuckers are thankful for. And I got something a little off edge. So while you were recording, I was in the other office writing down some shit, thinking. And I'm going to let Rohan go first on this one. I want you to name something you do that nobody knows about. Something that I do that no one knows about. Mm -hmm. So okay. it's going to go you, then me, then Mike. Okay. Go ahead. Um, one thing that I do that no one knows about, well, no, everyone is going to know, is um, for the last week and a half, I have been, um, I started like praying for my future. So like my wife, my kids, et cetera, um, and hoping that they're kind of happy now and in a good place. Uh, been praying for like my future self and stuff like that too. Uh, to know that, you know, this ride's not always going to be uphill. There's going to be quite a few downhills to where, you know, the, the, the bottom is going to seem somewhat endless, but, uh, you know, at a tunnel, there's always have to, there's to be an entry point and there will be an exit point at some point. So, uh, you know, just to, just to keep going along and, and never give up hope. I dig it. That's uh, a, yeah. it's a good positive fucking message. Yeah. I was thinking you more like something like. The past week and a half, I've been masturbating in the same <laughs> sock. The shit's starting to walk down the stairs on its own. But you came with some spiritual shit. Me, I'm not going to answer it because I don't want nobody to know some shit that I don't. <laughs> I, I'm sitting here trying to think of, uh, other than the fact that I jerk off with my feet. Uh, yeah. no. Which is a fucking <laughs> Which, huge talent. I got to tell you, the flexibility required alone uh, should baffle most people. No, the... Uh, uh, there's enough nosy fucking people in my like I, I can't think of something that i do that nobody knows about i like I, I can't think of anything that that actually would would be categorized in that because somebody knows everything that i do there's at least one person that knows every fucking thing that i do i, I can't think of anything yeah i'm you know? kind of the same way if if there's something i don't if there's something i do that Say you don't want your wife to know, your girlfriend, significant other, whatever. It's somebody else somebody knows. Somebody else knows. Because yeah. you're like, say, hey, man, check this shit out. Yeah. So there I was. There was a monkey. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm the same way. There's somebody knows everything, everything I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
It leads me to my next question, and this is for most of you fuckers. <laughs> what are the two key components for canine success? That's effective training and proper nutrition. Fueled by Team Dog brings those two components to your family and best friend. The perfect nutritional balance that results in a higher mental acuity, energy, overall vitality, and even an improved appearance. Every product you will find in my company's store was born from the battlefield and not from the boardroom. Let my life's work help you become your dog's hero. In the comments as well, so after you're, what you're thankful for, guy code. I got to thinking about this the other day. Um, we've talked about it a little bit before, but how far on a scale from 1 to 10 have you went to break guy code? So a couple of things in guy code. Many of you know if, if your buddy tells you something and he's like, say, this stays between us. Are you one of them motherfuckers that goes home and be like, check this out, babe. This motherfucker. Or are you the dude that keeps that shit? Do you break guy code? Or what other, what other is a good one that they could be breaking guy code wise? I think, uh, well, I mean. To selling, me, selling out your dudes is a pretty big one. Yeah, I mean, you know, to me, like, if, if you're friends with somebody and, and they're a good friend of yours, you got to respect uh, whatever it is that their wish is. Like, if they did something and they don't want somebody else to know, like, you, you got to fucking, uh, like, as a man of honor, you got to keep that to yourself, you yeah. know? Uh, I don't, I don't, I can't think of a circumstance where, I'd be like, oh, I, you know, let me fucking go ahead and tell this person anyway. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I, I really can't, you know, because to me, even if it's something where it's fucking illegal or massively immoral or whatever, like, it's not my fucking business, you know. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm a huge mind your own fucking business kind of guy, and, and, uh, you know, I just like, I don't even want to know, you know, yeah. but, so, but, but if I do, then, like, I can, I'm going to do everything in my power to keep that fucking between us, no matter what it is, honestly. So here's the for instance I'm going to give everybody on that with what he just explained. So say, and this has never happened, so I'm going to use Billy calls me. I don't know no Billy, but Billy calls me up. <clears throat> hey, Matt. Man, I just got arrested for banging this Asian prostitute. My wife's right here. I'm listening. Hey, man, don't tell anybody, but can I borrow a 1000 bucks? My wife asked me. What the fuck did Billy want? Billy's got this investment opportunity. He wanted to know if he could borrow a couple thousand dollars. Of course, I'm going to take his thousand. I'm going to use a thousand. I'm going to invest a thousand into crypto, yeah. try to get. Yeah. Billy ain't going to pay me fucking back. Uh, that it, type of shit. Or are you that dude talking about this motherfucker was banging an Asian? No, I mean, so to me, that, that, that's a good question. And, and I think, you know, for me, in, in the interest of not bullshitting her either, I would just say, my buddy is in a bad fucking spot. He's, he's in a bind and he needs some cash and I'm going to give it to him. And if she's like, well, what's it for? I'd be like, that's between me and him. Yeah. You know, and, and you can not like that and you can fuck off, you know, but that that's the gist of it. Like, I don't want to bullshit him and, and, you know, feed him some fucking line on the same token. I'm not going to fucking tell you if he asked me not to, you know, so. So, so Mike's the, if 10's being, you're the most sellout motherfucker in man code. Mike's in that one category. I'm probably in the two or three because I half ass bullshitted her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah. I was saving my ass so I could still get a yeah. blowy later. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, Ro Rohan, well, fuck, you've never been laid. So, no, have you ever broke guy code? Um, No. He, he, he's lying. No, I, I I take that stuff very seriously because if I like was. a girl. How? Halloween. Okay. No, I dressed up like a guy, but dressed as a girl. Yeah, <laughs> which is the same fucking yeah. thing. I no, dressed it was just in a drag. Guy. Oh god, girl. <laughs> that's funny. But um, no, I take that stuff pretty seriously because if someone was talking, you know, if I told someone, like if I told you, Matt, hey, you know, this is, you know, this is like a low point, or I don't want to, you know, I did this and I don't want anyone to fucking know. I would want that same respect that you know. Hopefully, I would, you know, if you trusted me with something, I wouldn't tell anyone else. Um. But if it's like, you know, if a buddy calls me and said, hey, I'm going to down these bottle of pills in hopes that I'm not here tomorrow, I'm breaking that shit in an instant where I'm calling either as someone who I know is at his house or, or something else. And um, if you're going to harm yourself or others or do something that is so, like, stupid that it's not even, like, 
it was it's more of a why did you do that now you know you've hurt, not only hurt yourself but <laughs> others i will do everything in my power to get you to stop so we're not robbing a bank with him <laughs> well yeah i mean i think that the self-harm thing is i, I wouldn't say it's tricky it, but obviously harming somebody else yeah like oh i'm gonna go kill this motherfucker uh i mean that to me that doesn't really need an, any explanation but yeah but the self-harm thing like if you legitimately want to take your own life and, and you want to be successful at it you're not going to tell somebody that mm -hmm. you know so to me just by somebody saying i'm going to kill myself like that, that's as much of a cry for help as it is the actual intention of of doing that because again like if if i'm legitimately at a point where i don't want to be alive anymore i'm not going to fucking tell somebody that i'm just going to go do it you know yeah. uh, there's no reason to tell somebody that unless you want them to try to stop you that's my take on it you go you're going deep track on the questions today I told huh? you, when i told you <laughs> i left and i was like <clears throat> i'm gonna go in there and i'm gonna come up with some good shit and that's what i was doing as i'm i went in deep deep as i'm watching the news i'm like ah oh, the news is bullshit today uh, there are some good topics and we're going to get into those and we got some good car shit to get into but me and mike recently recorded another video and uh that'll go up surprise for you fuckers uh that'll go up and it'll lead into some shit next week uh but so i'm gonna I'm go here too i'm a divorced dude and i've noticed it's been four years five years five years since my divorce and you notice, a lot of people forget when you get a divorce, you might lose half your shit. Chances are you're going to, uh, or more, three quarters sometimes. But what you never figure out, you're going to lose some friends. And it's usually not a few friends. You end up losing a lot of friends because there's the friends that go with the wife. There's the friends that stay, I'm going to be friends with both of y'all. And Fuck those motherfuckers sometimes. Switzerland fence riding sons of bitches. Yeah, because them motherfuckers, <laughs> them are some dude code breaking motherfuckers right there. Uh, and then you got the ones, of course, went with her. But then you got the true down to earth people that stick with you. So thinking of that, who are your friends if you were married right now that are still, you don't have to name them, but do you have friends that you're like, that motherfucker's going to stick with me. This motherfucker's going to stick with me. And does it change your outlook on the type of friends you make from that point on if you've ever been divorced? Yeah, so for me, being a divorced guy also, uh, I will say it's probably one of the starkest contrasts between me and my ex and, and you and your current, I think. Like, you guys go out with a lot of people. Like, you know, it's like, oh, we're going to dinner. So, and like, we never or rarely did shit like that. You know, we didn't have a lot of friends not from here. So in, in thinking back to, you know, I got divorced, I think about the same same time frame as you did or, or pretty close to it. Uh, I, I can't think of a single person that, that I would say that I lost as a friend due to divorce. Yeah. Um, you know, so I, I, I've always kind of been more of the, I've got a handful of really close friends and everybody else is just like somebody I know. You know, uh, I don't hang out with very many fucking people. Uh, the people that I do hang out with are, are close friends of mine. And that's really it. I, I don't like the the small talk, chit chat, so-and-so that lives down the street and we're going to go like, I just, I don't fucking do any of that, you know. Um, I, like, I'd rather be alone at home uh, or with, you know, the, the people that I can count on one hand that I fucking really, really appreciate and, and want to spend time with. Uh, and that's about it. But so, yeah. I don't know. And you probably noticed this when I go to uh, events, I treat events like I treat things I do outside of the yeah. events. So when people come up to me, if, if you guys were at some of these meets, my shit talking level, y'all say, man, I'm still kind of camera shy on here, but in person, <laughs> I will say some fucked up shit off the wall. That's people shouldn't be saying yeah and uh, that's how i am when i'm at the neighborhood events like i got half the fucking kids thinking i'm selling drugs down the yeah. street and the other <laughs> half think my wife's a murderer uh, and that's just the type of shit i do at those events yeah. you know you just want to keep them fuck fucking in the not in the know but in the wondering what the fuck's happening at that house yeah sometimes i want to just do recordings of us yelling and we're not even home you know it's just playing yeah. in the house and <laughs> beating the shit out like of each you're other. fucking arguing screaming yeah. at each other just play loud over the surround sound and we're <laughs> fucking out at dinner yeah. or some shit yeah no right. i uh i'm i'm more of the just fucking 
you know, I'll, I'll casually fucking interact with people and, and be polite or pleasant or whatever, but uh, unless they give me a reason not to, but at car shows or public events or whatever, I, I there's only really been a, a few times where somebody's fucking annoyed me or, or gotten the the dick side of me i guess uh you know because of something they did or said or whatever that, that's pretty rare I, you know I, I usually find it pretty easy to get along with most people but i'm the opposite i yeah. hate every one of you motherfuckers that walk up to me no i'm just kidding i talk to a lot of people yeah but don't fucking message me this happened yesterday a motherfucker messages me ask me to message mike about show and tell on his motherfucking car fuck you don't message me asking me to ask him this ain't no fucking high school bullshit. Yeah. And I'm not going to ask my buddy, say, hey, man, yeah. I'm going to need you <laughs> to show your yeah. car. You want to see our cars, not being dicks, because we'll show anybody our cars, but it's not at our houses unless you're our neighbors yeah. or a friend. But if you're somebody who wants to see the car, chances are, if you're local, look up the events. We're yeah, at let's them. go to the car shows. Yeah. Come yeah. up there. We're nice. We'll talk to you, but I don't want you at my house. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to meet you anywhere. That yeah. even seems more sketchy. Hey, man, will you meet me behind the Tom Thumb? <laughs> and then we'll ride over to the Kroger, and then we'll see <laughs> if we can go to a McDonald's, and then I'll look at your car. Well, bitch, yeah. fuck you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so. Rohan, how about you with divorce? I've never I've never been divorced. So. Well, well, you got to get, get laid before you get divorced, so. Yeah. yeah. How are you doing on the getting laid ass? <laughs> uh, it's um. That that says it all, right there. Uh, it's, no, uh, no, I've been uh, I've been kind of getting out there more. Is that um, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just kind of meeting new people and 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 you know and kind of enjoying life and and that's what you know getting the bike is all about. Kind of just enjoying life and and having more and newer life experiences. Um, yeah. You know, of everything that you just mentioned, not a single part of that had anything <laughs> to do with sticking your dick in anything. No, no. So yeah, no. I, I'm telling you, I was finger blasting chicks when I was 13. Yeah. It used to be a goal of mine to see if I can get past my thumb knuckle up in a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it never happened. <laughs> but you see videos online, and motherfuckers are like. Wrist watch deep and shit. The fist, the whole fist, and nothing but the fist. They must have some little ass hands. That's probably a part of it. I mean, or did that chick just give birth? And yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's. I mean, it could be smoke and mirrors. You know, it could be camera tricks. Who knows? But I thought yeah. I, I don't know if I mentioned it on the last show or if it was when we were with somebody. All the shit that I was saying that I got in trouble. Oh really? I remember what I was saying to get in trouble. Oh yeah. At the doctor when I was like, that shit's gonna blow your shit up. You're gonna be like, <laughs> uh, yeah, I got yeah. trouble. That's fucked up. Uh yeah. So I'm telling you, I'm trying to go deep today uh, until we get into topics. I also want to ask you you guys and gals to go to Patreon and or not Patreon, iTunes and Spotify. Leave us a review. Uh it's good for any type of review, you know. If you not bad, don't leave a bad one, man. Fuck you if you do that. Fuck it, leave a bad one, but we were five stars. Uh, <laughs> go give a review. It helps bump our stuff up, and it's good for you guys, too, because if we get bumped up, then our quality is going to go up because we'll make an extra 15 cents. And if you want to see early shit, you can go to Patreon, where we're always on there trying to talk some shit. So that that's the advertisement. Oh, and T-shirts yep. in the description below. That's right. Um, and people have been asking about the book. Uh, Mike mentioned... Some people go on there, and y'all see this on a Wednesday, and they're like, oh, I went to my site, and the books are sold out. That's for the package deals, right, that comes out only on Tuesdays. Yeah, so for the, the signed bundles, uh, we do a limited run every Tuesday between, what was it, two weeks ago and, uh, and I want to say the 1st of January. Uh, they are bundled deals only. And they're limited because uh, I only have so many of them that I've signed uh, that are going to be available because I'm not signing 10,000 fucking copies. But um, so, yeah, that's that's the deal. If you want a signed one, <clears throat> you got to go on uh, MikeRitlandCo.com on Tuesdays and buy you a bundled set before they uh, before they sell out for the day. So that's uh, that's the rub on that. Yeah. Also, if you have bought the book and you're listening, uh, go on fucking Amazon and review it, please. Uh, no bullshit, good, bad, or indifferent. If you hated it, 
I can, I want to hear about it. Uh, if you loved it, uh, also I'd love to hear about it, uh, and why. So, uh, on both accounts, but either way, get on there and fucking throw a review if you've bought, bought it and read it. Yeah. Cause I don't want to go in there, copy and paste y'all's comment, make up a fake ass email for you just to go over and put the review on there. That would suck. That's right. Yeah. So guys help him out. And some people ask me, and this is no bullshit. I get asked this. I get messaged all the time. Do I support Mike's dog food products because we're buddies? And you can, Michael attest to this. I'll tell him if his shit sucks. Uh, there's one of his products that my dogs are allergic to, and it's the turkey. It's not his product. It's my dog. They're allergic to poultry, I think it is. Yeah. Uh, so it's duck. I mean, it's fucking anything in that line, and it's just two of my dogs, which are brother and sister. The rest of his product. So we're dog sitting, and they bring that full bag of dog food it's he won't touch his fucking regular dog food now he got into your dog food yeah and that's all <laughs> he'll eat we try to put his dog food in they walk past it like we just punched them yeah, that's awesome they walk around the counter yeah. bar to yeah. get away from that like i ain't touching that shit yeah so those of y'all that want to know uh some random ass dog at my house yeah. is eating Mike's food and won't eat regular shit now. Well, the other thing, I, I feed all of my dogs that food. Uh, no bullshit, you know. So the food, the treats, the supplements, they they all get that stuff. So, uh, you know, the CEO of McDonald's doesn't eat McDonald's a whole lot. But uh, I will say, like, I'm not putting a product out that I don't stand behind and, and uh, use or give to my, my animals myself. So it's the whole reason I, I developed it was because I didn't like what was out there. So, yeah. There you go. Enough commercials. On to the show. On to the fucking show. Kyle Rittenhouse, not motherfucking guilty on all motherfucking count. What's your thoughts on that? Some people got butt hurt, and that's actually the next topic, uh, but not guilty. What's your thoughts on that? Uh, so, you know, we had kind of a, an exchange with, uh, I think, the Dark Knight is uh, the username on on the last video and uh, mm -hmm. trying to explain is that I think what, you know, one of the big problems and I'll get into my thoughts in a minute, but you know, the, I, I think that the biggest issue with cases like this is, is a few different things. Number one is that people are emotional about it. Uh, I understand where, where the emotion on both sides comes from, uh, but it, it clouds your judgment as it relates to both the process and the outcome, uh, the judicial judicial system by design uh, is is not meant to have emotional influence in it. The other thing that that I think where people make a huge mistake is that they, uh, you know, the adage throwing the baby out with the bathwater type of mentality, and, and this is again on both sides, is that um, there there's a connection of I don't like that fucking guy, and so I think he's guilty, or I do like that guy, and so I think he's not guilty what you think of a, of a person's character has to inherently not influence where it's not supposed to. Now it's human nature for it to, to a certain extent, but here's the reality is that, you know, I've heard, and this was, you know, some of the, the, the arguments that I've heard of like, he shouldn't have been there, right? Well, he, he was up to no good. Like he wanted something to happen. You can think that that can't influence the actions, you know, the, the actions that are on trial, are his actions on that night at that time in that instance, and that is it. Not his character, not what he did you know, after that, not, not what his Instagram feed looks like. On the same token, right? the guys that he shot and killed, people that, that want Kyle to be innocent are saying he's a fucking pedophile and a domestic abuser and whatever. Now, I will say in the pedophile case, if I understand this correct, correctly, this guy anally raped several young boys. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, that motherfucker should have gotten put down immediately for that. He shouldn't have even been in the position to assault Kyle. In, in my opinion, pedophilia, where you're raping young children, you should, you should get fucking assassinated for that. So I've got no sympathy for that guy. But the other two dudes, right, by societal standards, were kind of shitbags. That doesn't mean that them being shot was justified, right? So for the people that are making that argument, you're equally wrong. Again, I'm, I'm leaving the pedophile out of this because that motherfucker deserved to die. But <clears throat> just like Kyle, you know, shouldn't be on trial for anything other than those actions that night, those guys didn't deserve to get shot because of their criminal record. 
They deserve to get shot because of the actions that they provoked that night. Now, a lot of people have also said, you know, well, he shouldn't have been standing there with a gun or by him standing there with a gun, he provoked them. I'll tell you right now, like me seeing somebody standing there with a gun, if I have a skateboard in my hand, I'm not going to run up and try to smack them with it, right? So that, that, that's a bullshit argument. And, and again, I'm going to say that there are cases on the other side that if you're, if for those that, that say Kyle's a dickhead, he's a bad guy, he shouldn't have been there, the things that he did leading up to that don't warrant him being able to defend himself, then then you also would would, should, or could take that same frame of thought with George Floyd or Rodney King, right? Is that we'll take George Floyd since it was so divisive and it's so recent is that he was on drugs. He was breaking the fucking law and he fought with cops that still, even though people tried to use that as a justification, which is wrong, that still doesn't warrant him being treated the way that he was treated the same way that, that Kyle, even though, you know, is it a good idea for him to have a gun out past curfew and in doing that? No, but it, it, it's not illegal. That in and of itself is not illegal, right? George Floyd, on the other hand, the things he were doing, he was doing actually was illegal, right? But in, in both cases, that in my opinion, and from the justice of, of our judicial system's perspective are completely irrelevant and they, they need to be irrelevant. And, and people need to understand that for due process to actually be due process and fucking work is that that's how it has to work. It is that the, the person's actions in that moment are what's on trial, right? And, and because our, our system says that you are innocent until proven guilty, okay, then that doesn't mean you get to say that was a bad idea and you shouldn't have been there, so you're fucking guilty. No, it, it's now the state, the actual state versus, in this case, Kyle Rittenhouse. It's their job to prove beyond the reasonable doubt that that guy is guilty of fucking murder and they failed miserably in doing so. Right. So I'm, I'm not cheering one way or the other on it. I, I look at it very simply is, is that, you know, I wasn't in, in the fucking I wasn't there that night. I wasn't in the courtroom. So, number one, anybody who, who says both of those things that, that weren't there that night and in the courtroom, you, you have a, a incom, an incomplete version of what you think J just by default. You do. But the fact is, is that those 12 jurors who are peers of that community, based on all of the evidence that was that was given, proven, shown, et cetera, all came to a unanimous conclusion that, that he was not guilty. And so you have to trust that fucking process because if you don't, then our legal system fails to exist. And that's a big fucking problem. So, you know, again, just from the from a sake of consistency, please try to look at it from that standpoint is that you're using the same criteria on that that you would on any other case, not having any basis on, on what that person's character is or isn't. Uh, and, and you have to look at it that way. And, and that's just how I view it. Yeah. yeah. That, that's not me hyping him up. That's a hundred percent accurate on, I would say in both those cases, the justice system worked the way it was supposed to. Um, Kyle, there's a lot of misrepresentation by the media, which does lead into my next question. And a lot of people, read into what some media outlets were saying. He went across, went home, which was across state lines, and then he comes back with a rifle to do everything that was done. What they didn't tell you is Kyle never went home that day. He was already in Kenosha where he worked in Kenosha. The rifle was at one of his family members. I don't want to say that wrong, but one of his family members bought Kyle that rifle, and it was also in Kenosha. So, therefore – the weapon never crosses state lines, and they went in and proved that. They also looked at Kyle's, uh, which I didn't find this out till after the trial. They looked at all his Instagram. They looked at all his messages, his text messages, and they went way back. And the kid had nothing really derogatory or racist on there, no supporting you know, this party or this party, just a kid. And he was a young kid trying to volunteer with paramedic stuff and all that. Should he have been there again? It's not my choice to say. Would my kid have been there? Yeah. No. I, 
I mean, so to me, even even looking at stuff like that and trying to see if there's an affiliation with a certain group is wrong. Yeah, you're searching. You know, in in, in that it doesn't matter. You know, yeah. uh, and and again, the he shouldn't have been there. Well, you, okay, you could say the same thing about the other guys. Yeah, none of them. Right. I mean, technically, they they were all breaking curfew. None of them were supposed to be there. You know, and and it's no more of a of a bad idea to be there helping a business def defend its property than it is to be there as a protester hitting people with skateboards and charging people, mm -hmm. right? They're both shitty ideas. In, in both cases, though, you know, the, the shitty idea squad on either side doesn't warrant what happened. Mm -hmm. The only thing that warrants what happened is the actual moment where somebody attacks somebody else and, and that somebody defended themselves, uh, you know, with, with deadly force. I mean, that's it. Like there isn't anything else, and, and when people try to inject politics to it on both sides, that's what what pollutes our entire society. Like politics has has nothing to do with any of it. And and I've heard again on both sides, this is a victory for for Second Amendment. It's victory for self defense. It's a victory for Republicans. Or this is a defeat for Black Lives Matter. Or this is a you know a, a nail in the coffin for for American uh, you know racism rights or, or civil rights but it's not any of those things this is a victory for one one thing and one thing only the, the the justice system in that it worked the way that it was designed to and that's it right it, it's not for or against anybody else it's very simply is that the justice system in that case worked the way that it's supposed to and that's it you know so for everybody that's either pissed or celebrating you know, I, I think you should tamper that that response down a little bit, and just be glad that we have a, a system that is designed a certain way, implemented a certain way, and worked effectively in that same way. And, and that's really all there is to it. Mm -hmm. Everything else that gets drug into it, uh, you know, is, is baiting you into getting emotional and, and either pissed or celebratory. Which, you know, if you're pissed about it, you're on one side of the fence. If you're celebrating, you're on the other. Uh, and in both cases, it's going to incite the other side, and it's just dumb. It's a waste of fucking energy. I think I think everybody just needs to chill the fuck out about it. I concur. That means agree. Uh, is your stuff here? Yeah, it's all right. I'll go grab it. No. Hell no. Grab well, I'll it. grab it so it's not sitting outside. Fuck that. I grab it, and I'd eat it. <laughs> Mike's been doing a show since, what, 10.30? Yeah, 10.30 this morning, so he has an eight. I had... Some uh, some crackers, and then my wife brought, brought me Brahms. Y'all ain't tried that Brahms sauce. Y'all don't know what's up. Not Rohan, that. have you ate? No, not yet. I'll eat after uh, the show. There's some crackers in there. I'm good. I'll eat, I'll eat after the show. Probably going to go to uh, Panda Express. You love Panda Express. I do, dude. Chick-fil-A Chick -fil and Panda, like, top two, easy. Dude, I'm not and a Chipotle. Chick I'm not a Chick-fil-A guy. Have you tried Kava? What? Kava, it's this new like Mediterranean place. It's like Chipotle where you kind of decide what's in your bowl. But um their 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 stuff is pretty good, man. Went uh, went Friday with some coworkers and was blown away by it. No, fuck that. Well, we should try. I'm it. really weird, man. I'm a steak and potatoes type of guy. Uh, uh I can't have steak, so I, I wouldn't know. Yeah. But Okay, I'm a pork and potato. Oh yeah. I uh, can I can have pork. Oh yeah, it's the re, the uh, Muslims that don't. Yeah, do Muslims pork, can't right? have pork. Hindus uh, can't have beef. Yeah, my, I mean, didn't stop my dad for a little bit, but then my mom was like, "If you have beef again, I'm leaving you," and he took that seriously. That fool went so. out of steak that night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, man, I, I'm a. It's really weird. My I guess I'm like my dogs. My my body does not like chicken. It loves turkey. Mm. Like what's coming up. My body loves some turkey, uh, but I can eat uh, chicken and stuff like that. That if it's shitty for you, I can eat it. Interesting. Fake ass chicken nuggets, I can eat those. Real chicken. Real chicken. I don't know, man. I'm I'll be shitting myself. I'm about to open this fortune cookie on air. We're gonna see what the fuck it comes back with. Oh, interesting. All right. Survey says. As I spill shit, how about another fortune? Fuck you. <laughs> To have joy, one must share it. Who's joy and is she hot? <laughs> yeah. What's joy look like? Does joy have a nice thick ass? Because <laughs> if she does, then yeah, she probably share that shit. <laughs> what yeah. the fuck? That's my fortune, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, ladies and gents. Mike, what is what is your uh 
What's your sentiment behind Chick Fil A, Panda Express, and have you tried Kava? All right, hold hold the fuck on here. <laughs> Chick Fil A, not a fan, just because there's so much garbage in uh, in the in the quote unquote chicken that isn't chicken, uh, and they use a bunch of fucking shitty uh, shitty ingredients. Uh, Panda Express, similarly, uh, I I love their food, but uh, the fact that they use really shitty vegetable oil to cook everything in ruins it so i don't i don't ever eat it um if they would just use fucking butter or goddamn avocado or olive oil to make everything i would eat the shit out of that food and the fact that they don't is just dumb the last fucking thing kava i don't even know what the fuck that is yeah kava is like a mediterranean it has like it's mediterranean food but it's kind of like chipotle where you decide what grains and 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 vegetable like if you decide the base you want so you can choose between lettuce and and yeah i've never had it can't, um, couldn't tell you. It's it's really good. I, I suggest it thoroughly. And yeah. then, well, um, I'm not going to eat it then since you suggested yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thanks. I suggest my wife <laughs> sucking his dick all the time. I don't mean that shit happen. Uh, so I'm going to tie into the the next part. Does Kyle take these fake news outlets to court for the fake shit they were putting out there on him? And does he? go after a sitting president, which he has the right to do in court for defamation of character. I would like to see it. Just, I would like to see somebody stand up to some of these bullshit outlets. Yeah. Even if he loses. Well, so that, uh, Nick Sandman kid that was 17 when he uh, got slandered on the, um, is that the New York times deal? No, that was the kid that, uh, a bunch of left wing outlets were like, Oh, that, you know, a kid has the most punchable face in the country. And, you know, it was the native American fucking interaction that, Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, he he sued CNN and like he he's uh, been awarded millions of of dollars in uh, in slander and liable uh, or defamation lawsuits. I, if I was Kyle, I I would. Mm-hmm. I, I think he's going to have a hard time, um, you know, winning or proving that it's possible and it's worth doing. Uh, I think the 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 big difference there is, you know, he shot and killed two people. You know, yeah. whereas Nick Sandman fucking stood there. Uh, you know, he didn't break any laws. I mean, again, not that technically Kyle did either, but uh, I think the the gravity and the nature of the case, it's going to be harder to prove. I could be wrong. Uh, If I was him again, I I would do it, but uh, I think he's going to have a harder time uh, winning. But I bet there's already a bunch of lawyers who've jumped on it and reach out to him because they're going to stand to get a ton out of that too. Uh, Either way. Yeah. Uh, If he's smart, he's like, Hey, we don't, uh, I don't pay you unless we win. Yeah. Hopefully he's fucking smart enough to do that. Well, I mean, a lot, a lot of, like in a case like that, there would be a lot of lawyers that would do it pro bono and unless they win, you know, because it's such a high profile case, uh, you know, they'll become overnight household names just by taking that case. So I'm sure he's got his, his pick of, of uh, big name lawyers that are fucking lining up to do that. I would, I would imagine, but yeah. Little fucker. Again, Kyle may just be out there getting laid right now and not give a fuck about nothing. Yeah. Uh, kid's going to have a rough go at it for a little while because, again, uh, media outlets and a lot of us as society, we have our favorite news channels. And sometimes you don't go back and forth and watch the difference between CNN, Fox, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, and therefore, sometimes you'll see one side, only that side, that's the side you st- stick to, like the facts that we found out. Kyle didn't cross state lines, all this stuff. And w- it's not just the Kyle case. It's almost every case you see nowadays that's publicly done. Uh, and then we don't hear shit, like the little girl who got shot in the McDonald's drive through line because the people wanted to kill her dad. Yeah, They didn't hit the dad, they killed the little girl, but nobody's reaching out about that because it, was, it wasn't a race crime, it was a gang crime, and a little girl lost her life. Uh, that's just the shit us as society needs to open our fucking eyes and just realize the media is going to give us what they want us to see. It's up to us to find the truth. Yeah. I just went philosophical on them. Yeah. Bitches. Fucking Nietzsche up in here. Yeah. Uh, new Ferrari. We're going to switch over to some real shit. Now with some of you come to see, uh, the new Ferrari, you order it. I ordered two of them, yeah. just in case one breaks down, because yeah. <laughs> they're only two point two five million US. So I figured, why not? Um, it's a neat car. Uh, the engine in it, you know, the Competition eight twelve 
uh, v- V12, uh, making 800 and some odd horsepower, naturally aspirated. I'm sure it sounds fucking amazing. And performance-wise, it's a good car. I was looking at uh, that 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 same engine in the 812 uh, is doing like a, a low five second 60 to 130, which is pretty fucking impressive. Mm-hmm. It's doing like a 4, 400 to 200 kilometers an hour. So. Holy shit. Um, that's fast. You yeah, know. that's fast. Yeah, I mean, that's faster than than the. That's faster than everything. I mean, that's about as fast as a fucking SF ninety, which is surprising. But uh, you know, to me, that that price alone makes me want to just you know tell it the fuck off. Like it's just that's an absurd price. I mean, that's two and a half times what the La Ferrari cost, and uh, you know, it's they're making a hundred more of them, I guess, than the La Ferrari. They're making five hundred ninety nine of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just think, um, you know, looks wise, it's a neat looking car. Not a hundred percent my style. Looks a little La Ferrari meets uh, Bugatti Chiron uh, look, but the the fins and the in the back, like the back end, I think looks terrible. And I don't like that gill fin kind of look that uh, is also in the front uh, forty five degree angle quarter panel uh, area either. But you know, again, it's just, it doesn't even matter what I think. I mean, it's so, so overly priced and so out of my, my league of, of getting, even if I had the money, I'd, I wouldn't buy something like that. So, um, you know, Ferrari obviously knows what they're doing. They must've had a bit of big enough market to justify making it and charging what they charge. For me, it's just a bit of a miss. I always wonder if that on cars like that, do they reach out to their high end customers yeah. and like, Hey, we're going to make, Five hundred sure. ninety nine. Are you interested? I'm sure they they do. Yeah, it reminds me of the uh, Testarossa, like the Testarossa and the La Ferrari had a baby. Yeah, and then the Bugatti came in there and just jizzed on their chest. Uh, it's a neat car. It's not for me, but I don't have two point two five million dollars to spend on a car. Yeah. <clears throat> I wish I did. That'd be a good problem to have. Yeah, I mean, like I said, even if I did, I, I don't think I would spend it on that. No. You know, because I it's, would get the shear on. Yeah, I mean, it's it's sport. too much of a work of art to want to drive it, and it's so limited. And, and even the Chiron, I, Chiron, however the fuck you pronounce it, kind of similarly, I don't know that I would buy one. If, if I was going to buy one, that would probably be the one. I mean, with a W12 with 1,500 horsepower, I mean, that'd probably be a fun car to fucking drive, and I would I would absolutely drive it, you know, but... In this case, you know, the performance numbers are impressive, but they're not impressive enough to make me want to drive the shit out of it. And when it costs that much, it's kind of like just what's the point, you know? Yeah. I don't really get the point of it. Um, so, I, yeah, I'm, I'm a little lost uh, on on what they were thinking with that. But Yeah, so for those of y'all that don't know, it's called the SP3 Daytona, I yeah. believe, if I'm saying it right. It's a cool-looking car. You can Google it. Rohan, mm-hmm. throw them a picture up right here. It's yeah. up. Uh, it's a neat car. It it has that matchbox feel to me. That as a little kid, the little you know the dinosaur car, the dump, mm-hmm. the car that they just like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it's cool. It's got a lot of cool specs. No active arrow. The comp- <clears throat> I can't ever say that shit. So it's the fucking eight twelve. The competition eight twelve. Fucking uh. The Italian, the Italian yeah. competition. Yeah, the Italian competition. Uh, it's a great fucking engine. I'm glad they're doing it. A mid-engine V12. To me, yeah. I think it says something. It shows they're not phasing out the V12 like yeah. we thought. No, yeah, I mean for sure, it's neat to see them putting that engine in something else. Also, yeah, and held the development that went into it. And on top of that. It almost looks like a fuck you to Lamborghini because it's a dual clutch V12 mid engine car. Yeah. Lamborghini <clears> says that can't be done. Yeah, I'd, I'd rather. I mean, even at that price, I'd rather have the competition, the A12 oh, competition. Oh, hundred percent. That competition on or whatever it is. The only thing I don't like about it, I still said it wrong, is that back window where yeah, they did the, the shell back. Fucking where they look. did the yeah. band 1985 Trans Am Bandit motherfucking yeah. back glass. Yeah. Uh, it's cool, and in the Ferrari, it does have its uh, its space. It's used, but it's just not for me. The 296, the one we both built the other day, that's a bad bitch. Yeah. And I really want to know what that cost is of that car. Well, it's going to be uh, specced out like that. It's going to be damn near what you'd buy a piece to four, you know, which to me, uh, I think you're still going to run into the same problem of north of 125 miles an hour 
you're only working with the engine. Now, in the SF90, you still have 780 horsepower. It, it's still going to perform probably similar to a Pista above 125. This absolutely is not. Yeah. You know, it's got a V6 making uh, six, 600 and some horsepower. It's just not going to perform the same, you know. So, uh, to me, that, that alone, as the Sharks would say, I'm out. Yeah. You know, but... I. I was seeing a uh, a trend of it looked like things were going backwards in the automotive industry. And me and you talked about this on the way back from the kennel the other day. I don't – I would have said six months ago, maybe 12 months ago, oh, the market will come back down. Give it 12 to 18 months. I don't think it will. And, and we talked about this. I think the supercar market – and Ferrari, the shit they're doing right now, I think is proving it. And McLaren, Lamborghini even. Uh, I think the supercar market's going back to what it was in the early 2000s, late 90s, early 2000s, where you got to have the money to play with those cars. And stickers, just a suggestion. It's not a reality. Uh, I don't think we'll see many of these cars unless you're a collector. I don't think you'll be getting them at sticker. If you want them secondhand, they're not going to be cheap. Yeah. And I think we're going to see that trend probably the next five years, I would say, right now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, between the chip shortage and, and the demand and, and what have you, yeah, I, I just don't see that that changing. I don't see it going back down, um, you know, which uh, I think ultimately is a good thing. And, and I will say, you know, looking at cars like the Plaid and the Remac and, uh, you know, Lamborghini and, and Audi going fucking all electric here. Uh, you know, to me, cars like the 720S, like the Pista, the GT3 RS, the GT2 RS, you know, to me, th those are so fun to, to drive now that I, I don't see that going away as far as, you know, the, the demand for the people who legitimately want a driver's car, not the guy that buys it so that he can say that he had one and then, you know, flip it and make money or, or not lose, you know, much because it's, you know, he's only put nine miles on it in the three years that he's had it. I'm talking about the people that buy a car because they want to drive it mm -hmm. and they want to drive it because they, they want to feel connected to the road and, and have a car that highlights the driver experience. And, uh, and, and, you know, the, like I said, the, there's a handful of cars out there right now that are so incredibly goddamn fun to drive that, that that's not going to change, you know, and a car like the Plaid or the Remac, even though they're, they're so fast that it's embarrassing by comparison, what they can do performance numbers wise on these cars, they're nowhere near as fun to drive, you know? And, and so to me that there's something that's rewarding and, and reassuring about that. Um, and that it's like, I, I don't care if there's electric cars that, that are out there that are faster, that are cheaper, that are, that are whatever, the cars that I'm driving right now give me as much fun as I've ever had doing anything, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that's what I care about, you know? So, um, you know, I'm, I'm in it for the long haul that way, but yeah, I, I don't, I don't see the prices coming down because of the, the numbers and the shift towards electric. But, um, I, I just, I, you know, there's not that many people, uh, that, that care about the driver experience as, as much as I'd say, you know, people like us do, there's just not very many people that, that feel that way. And so because of that, I think that, you know, the few numbers that are out there, there's not like a mass producing of these cars and there's going to be even less in the future that I just, I don't see the prices going down on them. But. Mm -hmm. No, and we're, we're definitely seeing it in the numbers of cars. Uh, <clears throat> what I paid for my 720S almost a year ago. Shit, it was over a year ago. Yeah. Over a year ago compared to what that same car is right now. It's a seventy thousand dollar swing. Yeah, it's uh, nuts. And so that that says something because those of you that know McLaren, hell, Lamborghini, Audi, for that, they were all taking hits. You know, if you had an Audi, which you experienced this, if you had an Audi R eight, and you were trying to sell it, shit, a year, year and a half ago, you were fucked. Yeah. I mean, it was. People don't look at them like Lamborghinis, which they are. An R eight is a Huracan. For those Huracan people listening, sorry about your bad luck, but you paid double for one without an Audi badge on it. Um, but now we're not seeing that. We're seeing we were seeing the Perfomontes under three hundred grand. Shit, two seventy six would have got you in a perf a year ago. Yeah. Now you're not touching a perf for under three hundred. 
Oh yeah. I if mean, you th- find one thirty or most most of them. Yeah, if you find one under three hundred, it's either wrecked, got shit ton of miles on it, or it was a track car that someone's trying yeah. to replace. Yeah. Other than that, you're not seeing it. Uh, all of them are shooting up. I think it's good. It shows something for the collector. Sucks for people like us that like swapping cars all the time. Yeah. But uh, well, I, th- I think the good thing about it for people like us it makes us may- maybe a little less impulsive and mm-hmm. calculated. As I say that, yeah, <laughs> you know, shit's fucking moving constantly. But yeah, but, uh, uh, matter of fact, in the next couple of weeks, I may have to eat my words on some shit I've said over many episodes. Yeah, uh, we'll just have to see what happens. Uh, yeah, the car industry is definitely a it's a moving organism. Like we've never seen. We suggested a while back if we want to see price gouging. I think it was two or three episodes ago. If we want to stop seeing price gouging at the dealers, they should start doing what Tesla's doing. Mm -hmm. Sell directly to the public. And Ford just announced that they may start selling directly to the public. Yeah. I love it. And then again, it does take away the feel of going to a dealership because as a little kid, or as someone coming up, my first new car, it was exciting to go into a dealer, walk it look around it, you know, and still to this day, I love going in looking as broke as possible and buying shit off the showroom. People don't think I can afford. I I think there's, there's a big component or element of nostalgia. That's only specific to our generation and older that way though. Yeah. Uh, similarly with, with the gas, gas engine cars is, as kids grow up and then there's less and less of that around They're They're not going to want that because they, they never grew up with that, you know? So, yeah, I mean, I do agree in that there needs to still be an ability to test drive shit and see, you know, kick tires in person and sit in it and see, you know, there still has to be some of that, you yeah. know, um, but there's going to be far less of it, I think, uh, moving forward. I think it's great for the, any of us that are common workers that are tired of paying markups for a Ford F-150, a fucking Dodge pickup truck, a fucking yeah. Dodge Hellcat, a Mustang. Mm-hmm. The Shelby Cobras to me should not be selling for what they're selling for. Yeah, the C8 Corvette should not be what it's selling at. Did you see the? Uh, I think I, th- I think I saw, and, and I don't know if it's 100 percent accurate. It could have been rumor, but I I, I did read what the pricing is going to look like on the uh, on the Z06 C8. Mm-mm, I haven't seen it. What's it going to be? Uh, north of 150. And that's their price. So, you know, it's from a deal, it's going to be car. over 200000 probably. Especially once you, everybody's going to want the carbon on it. Yeah. And there's going to be a, a significant markup on it, guaranteed. Mm-hmm. So, well, hell, we're seeing the C8s. I got a buddy who just got rid of his C8. It was wrapped with some wheels on it, and he traded it in for $110,000. Oh. Sticker on it was $98,000. Mm. And he took it, drove it, did some shit to it, had fun with it, and got rid of it. Yeah. To me, yeah, he did well, but he paid a shitload more than that for that car. Yeah. And it's like, you still took a hit. Yeah, you came out better than Sticker, but you still took a hit. Yeah. Uh, hell, if what I'm working on goes through, I'm not going to take a hit. I just got fucking lucky. Yeah. That whole deal, I just got fucking lucky. It's almost like fate said, look, dumbass. Yeah. This is the last time. We're tired of fucking with you. Yeah, yeah no shit. Uh, but... Uh, Get into Saturday a little bit, or do you have any more car stuff you want to talk about? Uh, this is going to be a little bit car related. Yeah, not that I can think of. So Saturday, we're driving to the events, and some of you people, I've, some of y'all are local to Dallas and have seen us driving and back the fuck off because they're like, fuck that, these guys are stupid. We fucking passed by a car that, I think it was just the day before that I was like, man, I see that fucking car everywhere. Mm-hmm. And I look in my mirror and uh, this little motherfucker's right behind us. And it's a BMW M4. I'm not going to get too much into specifics in case his dad happens to fucking watch or something. <laughs> but that kid, for his age, has, I would say, some damn good driving skills. For sure. Uh, the kid kept up the whole time. And he didn't do... The whole shit, you know, and we see that a lot when we try to drive to meets with everybody. If I'm wanting to fuck with you, I'll pull beside you, but I'm not going to pull beside you and someone else. Well, there are times I pull over here and let y'all take off and try to catch up, but I'm not going to try to pass a racing car, which we've had that before. 
people try to pass races, get in front of us, and then it's just a dangerous situation. This kid didn't do that. Yeah. This kid did what you're supposed to do when you're driving in a group because at that point we became a group. I noticed we weren't losing the kids, so we didn't really do side by side. We just started fucking hauling ass doing what we do, and that kid stuck with us mm-hmm. there and back. Yeah. Well, I wasn't there on the way back because I took <laughs> uh, I took one, one exit instead of another one. But uh, And we made an agreement. Yeah. We're talking. Hey, Mike's like, hey, I want to go this way. Do you know how? And I'm like, yeah, just follow me. My dumb ass shoots over three lanes and guns it, and then Mike guns it, and I don't see Mike again until lunch. Yeah. Uh, I get a text, and I see you going over the bridge. I was like, Yeah, well, I, yeah, huh, I mean, I, I can't take that exit now. Yeah, we were getting after it, and I just got too too far ahead, I guess. I mean, there was a, a bunch of traffic behind me. I just I got lucky and made it through a little thread the needle scenario and, and kept hammering it. And then at that point, I was like, Fuck, I don't think you can get here from there. And then I was like, maybe I have to take this road first, and then and then get on it because it's not a way that I've I've ever taken before. So, yeah, my, I mean, ultimately it's my fucking bus, but but uh, yeah, yeah, fucking kudos to that that dude. He uh, he drove with some serious fucking gumption. Yeah, awesome. that that kid, he wasn't no punk, and he was a good down to earth kid. Yeah, uh, had his fucking head on his shoulders, fucking hustler. <laughs> Yeah, we got to shit together. Yeah, and we don't we don't get to see that much nowadays. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we got fuck sticks like Rohan. No, I'm just, <laughs> I mean, but this kid was. I mean, he's explaining. Kid's younger, has his own business. I mean, this kid can't buy cigarettes, and I'm telling y'all, he has his own business doing well. Yeah, and it's impressive to hear the shit he did to get to that level. It's like, damn. Mm-hmm. I know adults who won't do that. Oh, I, I know a lot of adults that aren't disciplined enough to do that. Yeah. That, that, I was proud of that kid, little fucker. Uh, sorry, I'm just looking at something. I'm going to, we're going to cut this episode a little bit short today because, well, for one, we ran out of my good topics. And two, Mike's been recording again since 10 30. So it's roughly five hours of recording right now. Well, you know, I'm I'm in it for I'm in it to win it. I'm in it for the long haul. But I, I'm not. I want some <laughs> more of them cookies I got earlier. The bitches were good. Um, we got Thanksgiving coming up, guys. Enjoy your family. Something we don't tell you guys enough. Thank you. Uh, Mike tells y'all more than I do, but thank y'all. Um, enjoy your family. These times we have with family, we take for granted. We were just talking about this. I told Mike I hate the holidays. Mike said he loves the holidays. And when I say I hate the holidays, I hate the running around. I don't mind once I get there hanging out. Yeah. Like the shit we did last year, that shit was fucking awesome. Uh, the shit we do with friends and family, that shit's fucking awesome. It's the running around like, hey, I need to go get yams and butter. Okay. Yeah. But we got to go get this yams from over here and a butter from this fucking place because so and so is allergic yeah. to this butter. It's like, <laughs> motherfucker. Yeah. You know. Thank God for Amazon and motherfucking uh, <laughs> shipping. Yeah, no shit. But the spend time with your family because we never know what's going to happen from day to day with family, with friends, everything. Yeah. So be thankful for that shit. Hell yeah. Enjoy it. Enjoy the time. Uh, that's all I got. You got anything else? Oh, same thing. Fucking, uh, you know, we'll have this episode will be the day before Thanksgiving, and then uh, I'm assuming we'll do the video you and i did in the garage maybe at yeah over the weekend or something and uh, i got a new mic drop uh, with travis kennedy who was the guest on here last uh, last week or whenever it was that mic drops coming out uh, the day after thanksgiving it's already on patreon right now but day after thanksgiving it'll be on youtube so hopefully you guys get uh, get some good content from us between now and the end of the year uh, and then uh, yeah just uh we appreciate you guys tuning in and uh, and the support so thank you yeah, I'm going to shorten. I think we're going to shorten the episodes through the end of the year because I, I just want to relax a little bit and coast through the end of the year. We're still going to give y'all episodes. But remember, we have friends and family and shit we're trying to keep up with and still get, get you guys content. But we're working to get you new content. That's right. So, that's it. Peace, bitches. <laughs>